Hey guys, what's up? I'm Mark and several videos ago, I shared with you my new Kia Sonnet. It was really about me buying this car from my investments. Well, this time around, you guys have asked me to just review the car and don't talk about my investments this time. So this is what we'll do in this video. So let's go. But before anything, if you are new to the channel, hi, I'm Mark. It's nice to meet you. In the channel, I talk a little bit about lifestyle, but I mostly talk about business and investments. And just to remind you, this isn't a car review channel. So my only basis is this old car before. The only reference that I have is my old 2004 RAV4. So do excuse me if my comparisons and expectations are a little dated. So you guys have asked, this is the brand new 2024 Kia Sonnet in its LX manual variant with a 1.5 gasoline engine. So I came across one of the comments asking me to review this versus the other more popular automatic variants. Again, this is the baseline variant, so it is the cheapest one at 758,000. So for the lowest variant of the Kia Sonnet, there are actually very few details that if you don't look hard enough, you won't see. So first off is this grill. If you see this grill, it's actually a matte plastic finish. When you look at the other variants of the Kia Sonnet, the finish is a glossy, um, I guess, more sophisticated type of finish. So that is one of the first things that you might be able to notice. So the second would be in terms of the headlights. It doesn't have any LED lights. So I wasn't really too particular about this. Uh, I didn't really mind. Um, I know it's very popular nowadays to have those that white streak um, that is practically on the whole day. Well, the good news is even though this doesn't have LED lights, it has DRL or daytime running lights. I guess for many of you, it's not that pretty as an LED, but for the most part, I'm happy with it. Now check out the back seat. So here at the back, I think it's one of my first times riding here. It doesn't have the armrest that the higher variants have, so um, it's not a great big discomfort. But if you're looking to relax and having an armrest, then this is definitely missing that. Um, you might also notice that the back seat is one whole slab, so it's a bench type. I saw in reviews of the higher variants that you are able to put down some parts of it, so it's usually a two-part back seat. Well, for the LX variant being the cheaper one, uh, you can only have bench type of seating here in the back seat. So, let me just excuse the stuff I have. So here at the back, so I'm a little over five feet six inches. So uh, it's quite comfortable. I like that my knees are able to be fully upright. I don't know if that makes sense, but. Um, I'm not like really slouched or, well, I could slouch um, and I'm pretty high up. So I think one of the reviews about the old Kia Stonic is that it felt more like a hatchback. While this one, um, very comfortable. It does feel like a real SUV already, even though it's just a subcompact SUV. Let's move over to the trunk. Pardon the mess again. This is the life of an Airbnb host. So I have around three to four trash bags in there uh, filled with bed sheets, towels, and whatever usual stuff that I go through for my, for my work. So the space for the luggage, I've tested it. I can put in as much as three full luggages. The only downside this is once you filled it out, so it would block the vision already for the rear view mirror. So that's a downside, but in terms of liter space capacity, it could definitely take it. Fortunately, I had to bring my parents to the airport a few days later. So here's how the trunk looks like with two full-sized luggages. So let's now head on over to the main side, the main cabin, the driver portion of the car. What's most noticeable also about the LX variant is that you are only working with partial LED screens. Like this 3 to 4 inch LED screen and the other sides you are working with normal mechanical gauges so the difference with the higher variants is that you are working with bigger LED screens 
I do like that there are manual gauges here. I'm not such a big fan of having everything LED, so I like this. It may be the lower variant, but I do like this design. I like that the speedometer is in pure digital form, so that's a little bit of a mix of modern and old. Another difference of the LX variant is that you are only working with an 8-inch LED versus a full 10 inches for the higher variants. Well, for me, it's such a small subcompact SUV that for me, I think 8 inches is just enough. That's what she says. That's what she said! <laughs> this entertainment system works with Google and Apple. Uh, again, this is such a modern car from what I'm used to. One of the things I like is that I don't have to compute for how much I'm consuming gas on a kilometer per liter basis. So I just have to toggle on to one of these switches here. And since refueling, I've done 10.3 kilometers per liter, so not bad, uh, pretty much city driving. And from the very, very start, um, I've driven 1,895.6 kilometers, a total of 137 hours that I've driven this car. My average is at 8.5 kilometers per liter. I know that's not really too efficient. Of mostly city driving, I haven't really even gone out of town yet. The furthest would be Fairview. Um, at 8.5 kilometers, I don't think it's great efficiency, but it's not all that bad anyway. So in terms of the design of the cabin, of the dashboard, what I really like the most about the Kia Sonnet is that it feels pretty tough, it feels pretty sturdy, feels pretty stable. It doesn't really give the feeling of an entry-level car. Um, I love the design, the space of the dashboard, the air conditioning with these gray trimmings. I think they're really nice, nice in big vents. It also has rear air conditioning, which unfortunately, it doesn't have separate controls for that. Um, I also like the simple, clean interface, very symmetrical. Kia has put in a heater portion. I know we don't need much of it here in the Philippines. When I was driving my dad's Avanza and you know the newer Toyota variants, they do away with the heater component altogether which I mean just because we're in the Philippines doesn't mean we won't need a heater at some point so I like that fact. Okay one of the things that perhaps is an eyesore and maybe glaring to me from time to time, I try not to look at it but this is where, where the keyless start engine button would be for the higher variants. So here, it's just so glaringly obvious that you bought a lower variant. Only when it comes to this though, when I was comparing the Kia Sonnet to let's say the Toyota Rays, um, I do like the key of the Kia Sonnet. I mean, it, it's sturdy, it's chunky. You still have to work with the key, but I don't mind. Again, I bought this knowing it's the lowest variant and Everything still pretty much feels very premium. It doesn't feel like I went cheap in time to buy this car. So yes, it's not a keyless start engine facility, but that's fine. And I guess what's most important about this Kia Sonnet in its manual variant is checking the gearbox. First off, I think it's built nicely. Uh, again, very symmetrical, very sturdy. It feels like a sports car. And as you see, it goes up to six gears. I've never driven anything that goes to six gears, so this is quite exciting. I guess one of the things that I would give some feedback to is uh, when you are shifting to reverse, you, you click on this toggle to be able to put it on reverse. So on reverse, take a picture of this. So we do have a rear camera, rear camera and sensors. The sensors are limited to the back. When going on reverse, it might tend to be a little confusing. I can slide into reverse. I could easily confuse reverse to first gear. It's pretty much in the same direction. If you are used to having your reverse gear towards the right when you when you shift in a more a traditional uh, manual gearbox, maybe that can be a little confusing and can be dangerous if, if you're not doing it so mindfully. So I guess this is one part where I would ask you to practice caution if you are buying the Kia Sonnet in its manual variant. Okay, so let's get this car on the road. So one of the things that I like about driving this manual variant is that it actually lets you know when to shift. So there it indicates when you should be shifting. Uh, let's try it again.
So I'm back on first gear. So there you go. So it lets us know when we should be shifting. What I realized here was that I actually stay on a gear too long and I think I'm not as fuel efficient as I should be. So this car actually gives you the ideal time um, when you should be shifting gears. So that's a neat uh, little tool that I also appreciate about this uh, manual Kia Sonnet variant. And when it comes to shifting, again, my only basis would be a very old RAV4 also in its manual variant. But what I really liked about driving this is it's quite easy to be shifting between gears. I mean, other than the reminder when to shift from first to second or sometimes it even tells you to skip a gear altogether. So I really like uh, how smooth it is to be getting into and out of a gear. It's not like I have to really press hard into the clutch and the transition between gears is always smooth. Uh, so that's what I liked about this. Um, yes, it's still a manual variant, but I feel like it's a very modern and technologically advanced manual car that is just a fun car to drive. So that's about it for my 2024 Kia Sonnet LX in manual variant. Um, so what do you think? Is this car on your list of what you want to buy? If you've liked this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys and happy car hunting!